Released in patch 1.6.0, the Huntress, nicknamed the Bear during development, became the first ranged killer in Dead by Daylight. Her introduction caught me by surprise. Basically, I learned about her only on the day she came out from a friend of mine who showed me a clip of her gameplay on YouTube. And right off the bat, I was unimpressed. Because instead of another character based on one of the popular horror movie archetypes, I was presented with an outlandish looking barbarian girl who sounded like she was voiced by the female version of Tommy Wiseau. To me, this sh just screamed at cheap community mod, and I was sure that nobody in their right mind would want to play this, unless they were held at gunpoint. But I was wrong, because for about two weeks after the Huntress was released, the entire community literally forgot that other killers even existed. So if you wanted to play Survivor, it was a Huntress every f match. And just so you understand what going against her so much felt like, after several days me and my friends literally started hallucinating her lullaby IRL. The reason for the Huntress immense popularity was simple. She came out as part of a free DLC, which means that every single player in the game had access to her from day one. And that was thousands of people, each of whom didn't really mind trying something new. Especially if it was a killer whose power turned DVD from a simple hide-and-seek game into a mother f shooter. The latter even inspired some of the popular content creators of today to actually try their hand at making DVD videos. Like for example Scott John, who initially became known for his compilations of crazy long-range shots. So how does the original Huntress compare to her modern self? Well, after several days of non-stop Huntress games in the version 1.8.0, which right now is the closest you can get to the patch where she was released, I can assure you that they're pretty much the same. Apart from some minor things that had next to no impact on the actual gameplay, such as a slightly slower launch attack speed and a couple of frames delay before throwing hatchets, I managed to find only two noticeable differences. The first one is a slightly longer reloading animation. At the release it used to last 4 seconds which is one second longer than what we have in the current patch. And normally such a difference is enough for me to spend half of the video crying about how bad it was because it didn't allow you to reload meat chase without letting the survivor escape, like I did in my clown video for example. But not this time, because unlike the clown, the huntress cannot reload on the fly, she actually has to find a locker and search it for extra hatchets. And this as you can understand physically cannot be done without interrupting the chase, and at that point does it really matter if it's gonna take you 3, 4 or even 5 seconds, because the survivor will most likely be long gone anyway, and there's gonna be no point going after them anymore. I need a crosshair, man. Oh, come on, like, how do you always know? <laughs> okay, you're pissing me off. Oh my god, please, 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 just get it, get it, get it. I hate myself, <laughs> please. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna go get more lock. Uh, I mean, more lockers. Yeah, that's proper English, by the way. I'm gonna throw lockers at you now. If I can find you, I probably can't. Cause where the f did you go? Are you? What? Scratch marks? The second difference is the way the Huntress lullaby used to work. And I'm not talking about one of her native perks, but rather her signature singing, which acts kind of like her second terror radius. The thing is that originally it was directional, which allowed survivors to perfectly track the Huntress exact location as long as they were in its range. And it was as bad as it sounds, because it gave survivors an insane advantage in the closed tiles. You know this thing when a Demogorgon starts doubling back in a spot where there's no direct line of sight to him, but you can still tell where he's going because you can hear his growling through the wall. Well, that's exactly what it was like going against the old Huntress, except that you didn't have to stay close to her, because unlike the demo's growling, her lullaby has a 40 meters range, which means that even if you were, let's say, on Haddonfield and there was an entire building between you and her, you would still know when she was trying to misdirect and cut you off from the other side. I'm gonna be standing right there on the other side of the building, and your job is to, like, Try and outfake me. But like, wait, 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 wait. The, the 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 chase is still going. Yeah, right now. Go. That side. Yeah. And now she's changing the direction. Wait. Yeah, she's still going that way. See? See how easy this is? She's still going that way. I, th I think you were trying to do something fancy, but yeah. See? 
That's fucking broken. And she's going that way. Yeah. You know what? I can make it a little bit harder for you. Now you have to like walk around. Oh my god. <laughs> That's the lord. I, I, I have no idea why I brought it. I, I don't need it. I, I can literally just run you with my eyes closed. While the old huntress basket was almost identical to how she plays today, the same can be said about her add-ons. Out of the 20 items in her current set, at the release only 8 work the way they do now. 7 more had either completely different properties or different values of the same properties. Core Stone, which used to give survivors hit by a hatchet hammerage for 30 seconds, making it an early prototype of the modern begrimed head. Ammonita Toxin, which used to make survivors hit by a hatchet blind for 30 seconds. Mana Grass Braid and Flower Babushka, both of which used to increase the hatchet wind-up speed by 10 and 20% accordingly. These were actually one of the Huntress' most problematic add-ons, because the stackable effect from them made her so quick on the draw, your chances of dodging her hatchets and loops became as high as getting a straight answer during a behavior Q&A. But it didn't stop there, because these add-ons could also be combined with the old Tinkerer, which further increased their efficiency, allowing the Huntress to charge hatchets almost instantly. This build was was known as Machine Gun Huntress, and as a survivor it meant that while looping you literally couldn't show in her screen for longer than a f***ing half-life, because otherwise getting hit was pretty much inevitable. Wait, oh wow, you found a similar tile. There's too many of them. <laughs> I thought you would I thought you would actually try and free drop. Okay. And death sentence for you. Because, bro, unless you pre-drop it literally on the first loop, you're done for. Venomous Concoction, which used to make survivors hit with the hatchet exhausted for 90 seconds. It might seem absolutely unhinged compared to the 5 seconds we have in the current version, but back then it made sense, because until patch 2.1.0, exhaustion used to roll back while running. So you kinda needed this higher value to make sure you could even catch up with the survivor before they stopped being exhausted. Alright, I'm gonna chase, but I cannot- I, I literally just cannot see you on, on my screen. <laughs> Bro, that's gonna take you 5,000 years to catch up. Still no angle? Bro, I love these walls. Oh no! Oh sh! Okay. At least I didn't drift this time. I'm just gonna pre-drop that. No, 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 no. See, that, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. In this version, you're actually rolling back exhaustion as you're running. And like, I think I've already rolled back like 10%. So basically, if this add-on gave you like 5 seconds exhaustion, it wouldn't be very useful, if you know what I mean. The aforementioned begrimed hat, which used to make survivors mangled and decrease their repair speed by 5% until healed. And of course, eerie hat, which not only used to grant 3 insta-down hatchets instead of 1, but also didn't cap the maximum number of carried hatchets. And this opened up possibilities for builds so obnoxious and broken, Satan himself would cry if he saw them. Like for example, how about 5 insta-down hatchets using eerie hat plus infantry belt? Or maybe you'd like 3, but with faster movement speed while winding up. Still not satisfied? I got gotcha, you, homie. Eerie Head, Flower Babushka, and Tinker. Because the only thing that could be better than the machine gun build is the insta down machine gun build. Bro, you're like. You hate the other side of the tile. <laughs> oh my god, that was so good. Bro, I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm getting juice right now. The oh, f. I lost you. Where did you- oh my god. I was like- I was juking myself. That's what I'm talking about! <laughs> like, I swear, there are scenarios where there's literally nothing you can do to counter this build. The remaining five add-ons are no longer in the game, because they have been deprecated after the Huntress add-on pass. Namely, Barris Toxin, which was a weaker version of Venomous Concoction, making survivors hit with the hatchet exhausted for 30 seconds. You seed Brew and You seed Concoction, which temporarily made survivors hit with the hatchet hindered. Fine Stone, which was a stronger version of Coarse Stone, giving survivors a 60 second hemorrhage after getting hit with the hatchet. And Pungent File, which revealed the locker ores within 36 meters from you at all times, even when you didn't need to reload. Um, first of all, the add on description is not accurate. It doesn't really reveal the locker's auras, but like the hatchet auras. And second, why? What the f is the point? Like, no, no, no. Imagine if I was running barbecue and chili. 
and I hooked someone, let's say here, then you look back, and the shit is just all over the place. Like, and you cannot see the survivors over it. Like, wh wh why? Why? As people were getting better at Huntress, going versus her was becoming more and more annoying. For example, very quickly Huntress mains realized that throwing hatchets at survivors on site was not the best idea, because it was too predictable and therefore easy to dodge. A much smarter thing was to follow them with your hatchet up until you had a clear line of sight to them and shoot them when they least expected it. To this day, it remains a very popular place style. In the most extreme cases, a huntress can wait for a good opportunity to shoot for so long you can shift W through half of the map during this time. And that's why such players are often referred to as waitresses, because they're huntresses and they wait. They are so sneaky, I can't even see them. What? Oh god, I'm gonna lose this one so bad. Speaking of waiting, you know what I'm waiting for? Till the sub counter on my channel finally says 20k, which hopefully happens before the new year. And you can help me achieve this milestone by hitting the subscribe button right now. It especially makes sense if you like my videos and you want more of them. And if you don't, that's okay, it's just your mom is dredge. Another thing was the infamous M2 into M1 combo. That's when you get very close to the survivor, hit them with the hatchet, and then because you get almost no cooldown after this, you quickly catch up with them again and down them with your basic attack. Works especially well if the survivor's pathing is a little rough, and they don't fully utilize the free speed boost they get after getting hit. I don't think you're running the right direction. Do I get to... Oh no. I thought M M M2 into Hindred into M1. Can I can I catch up, please? Yeah! Oh wow. I'm in Let's go! That's That was not bad! But all this pales in comparison with the exploit that was discovered shortly after the release. The thing is that when the devs were releasing the Huntress, they forgot to make sure that all the maps were actually ready for her power. And that's why initially some of them had walls the Huntress could shoot through using the little gaps between bricks, boards and whatnot. It wasn't easy to pull off because you had to be standing right up against the wall and your aim had to be literally pixel perfect. But trust me, being able to hit a survivor on the other side of what they thought was a safe tile was ultimately worth the effort. One of the most broken tiles in this regard was the killer shack, where three of the four walls had not even one but several openings which you could use to hit the survivor going for the pallet or window. And that basically turned the killer shack from one of the safest tiles in the game into a huge giant death trap. I can't, like, I can't quite tell, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to find the exact hole where you need to be standing. I think I, I can't... Oh no, I, I can't vault even. <laughs> there you go, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, by the way. And if you just thought that was crazy, that's because I haven't told you the best part. On some of the old maps, in order to hit a survivor standing behind a wall, you didn't even need to look for any gaps in it. All you had to do was stand up against the wall and throw the hatchet right at it, and provided that the survivor on the other side was also close to the wall, the game would actually register it as a successful hit. I have no idea why it worked this way, and especially why it was a thing only on specific maps, but my working theory is that on some maps the walls used to be thinner, and that's why during the throwing animation the Huntress hitbox sort of faced through them and reached the survivor. Now what did it mean in practice? Well just that if you were playing against the old Huntress, hugging walls was very much not recommended, because it was basically like asking to get hit. Again this trick wasn't that easy to do, because it actually implied knowing the survivor's exact position behind the wall, which is, let's face it, impossible in most cases. Most but not all, because if we take for example the old farm maps, old jungle gyms there used to be pretty much see-through, so hitting someone on the other side was not that unrealistic. Here's a crazy idea. You stand here. I'm gonna stand on the other side. Oh, actually, yeah. Mm, where are you? No, a little a little bit to the right, like where I am. Yeah, yeah, here. Um, game? Game? <laughs> 
Is everything all right? It was also during this period that people started noticing how janky and inconsistent the hitboxes of the Hunter's hatchets were. One match they could be bearable and almost fun to go against, and the next you got hit by hatchets that flew by 15 meters away from you, as if someone just threw a f train at you. A lot of people claim that the real cause of such questionable hits is not the actual hitboxes, but rather your connection. Which did make sense back in the day, because the game was peer to peer, and as a survivor you fully depended on how far away from the killer you lived, and how stable the Wi-Fi at their local McDonald's was. But the thing is that even with the introduction of the dedicated servers, the situation didn't change much, and I personally still get hit even when on my end the hatchet clearly missed me. Here is what my typical Huntress games on the live servers look like. Okay, yeah, she's coming here. Oh my god. No. What? I'm not playing this. For anyone wondering, in this clip my ping was a hundred milliseconds. A stable hundred milliseconds because it was running DVD through exit lag. By the way, contact me for sponsorship. And some of you might say that this is what explains it, because a hundred milliseconds is just too high for playing DVD comfortably. To which I'm gonna respond, no, because if you look closely, the same very clip shows how I perfectly dodge a similar shot just several seconds before I got treacherously robbed of a pallet vault. Moreover, such bull hits happen even for the people who play at 50 slash 60 milliseconds. And this makes me think that maybe it's not just about the size of the hitbox and the server connection, but also the way the game detects hits in pallets and windows, i.e. netcode. And maybe, just maybe, the devs knew that this part of their code was a little messed up, and as a way to remedy this, they decided to not give the Huntress a crosshair, so that the amount of stupid misses compensates all those blatantly undeserved shots. But, but hey, that's, that's just, just a theory. theory. By the way, speaking of crosshairs, a lot of players have been dreaming of having a crosshair while playing as the Huntress ever since she first joined the killer roster. And considering how many free crosshair overlays there are in the market, it was only a matter of time until Huntress main started actively using them to boost their accuracy. Of course it didn't provide a perfect result, because the hatchets fly in an arch-like trajectory and, depending on how far you are from your target, they can either land exactly where the crosshair is sitting or way, way, way lower. But it didn't stop people from using them, because at the very least they helped with horizontal horizontal aiming, which was already huge. Come out, come out, come over here. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. stand there, stand there. Yo, crosshair. Now go behind that thing. And start healing? Heal. I'm, I'm not sure if I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, because when you're healing, your hitbox is a little bit higher, and that's why if, if uh, the Huntress is trying to like snipe you, like literally just stop healing, because yeah, that's how it works. And immediately, Crosshair split the community in half. Some people thought that using them was fine, because it didn't imply messing with the game files, and therefore was completely legal. While others claimed that it was cheating, because it gave you a massive advantage not only over survivors, but also over other Huntresses who didn't have Crosshairs. And over the past six years, the situation hasn't changed even in the slightest. People still use Crosshairs, but it's kind of frowned upon, just like stretch resing was when it was still a thing. And here is a hot take. I personally don't don't care if Huntresses use crosshairs. In fact, if I could trade a basket crosshair for a consistent hitbox, I would do it in a heartbeat. The Huntress gameplay started changing pretty early. About two months after the release, she received an indirect upgrade to her power in the form of barbecue and chili, which was introduced as part of the Leatherface DLC. This perk shows the auras of survivors standing farther than 40 meters away from you when you hook someone, and it was just perfect for the Huntress ranged attacks. Because with any luck and some skill, it allowed her to snipe the unsuspecting survivors from literally across the map. As cool as it was, from my experience, back in the day not too many Huntresses relied on this trick. However, later as the devs kept adding more and more aura reading perks, this playstyle gradually started becoming meta. Uh, let me get in the position... Yeah, that should be enough. Look at me, Hector. Hector, look at me. Hector, Hector, this is your last chance to look at me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm in... okay, yeah. It's not exactly, uh, it wasn't exactly barbecue and chili, because we don't really have, uh, you know, other survivors, but yeah, you get the point. 
In order to get back on the barbecue, Huntress's survivors started bringing Object of Obsession, which until patch 4.7.0 not only used to be their strongest aura reading perk, but also the best counter to the Huntress. The thing is that originally it used to reveal the killer and survivor to each other within 72 meters, as long as the survivor was looking directly at the killer while also being outside of their terror radius. And considering that the Huntress terror radius is only 20 meters, which is the lowest value among all 4.4 killers, you can only imagine how much she suffered from this perk. Basically, if she started chasing a survivor with object of obsession in any tile that was bigger than 20 meters, like for example most of the main buildings, and the survivor happened to be on the opposite side of it, she would end up in a situation where the survivor would always be able to see her, because they would always be outside of her terror radius. And the only way to break this vicious circle for her would be to cut the survivor off by going inside of the main building, and depending on the map it could be either a bad idea or a very bad idea. Hello? Are you trying to get some more hatchets? <laughs> so yeah, when you're inside, there's nothing I can do. A little bit. I can I can I can listen to where you're going. And when you're outside, hello? <laughs> I'm right here because yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. Good luck with that with that shot. <laughs> yeah, now you're inside and now I have to listen to where you're going. Right there. It's like, you know what, it's like, it's, it's almost like you're f no matter what. When you're outside of the building, I can see you. When you're inside, I can hear you. It's like, pick your poison, bro. A couple of weeks after the devs added barbecue in Chile, they made the first attempt to fix iridescent head by making it limit the maximum number of hatches you can carry to one. And even though it was a pretty big nerf, it wasn't enough to discourage Huntress mains from bringing this out on every other game, because it's still stacked with infantry belt, giving you a total of three insta-down hatches, which was more than enough to make any survivor wanna uninstall. Wait, what, what the f*** are you doing? here no 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 i was not <laughs> you were like trying to dodge it so hard it wasn't even aiming oh please bro please bro no how do i what the f am i supposed to do here <gasps> bro please bro <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is that uh i still have two more hatchets i do like that the next year for the Huntress was quiet. The only thing that happened during this period was the removal of the exploit which allowed her to shoot survivors through walls. Can't say exactly when it happened, but I know for sure that by the spirit release it was no longer a thing. Um, stand... stand Everywhere. Here. Yeah, I guess. Oh, uh, no, 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 you stand, you stand here. You see? See? I, I, I can't, I can't, I cannot hear through. That's what I'm talking about. Well, this hole is big. It's super big, but they added collision everywhere, so it's impossible. Let's let's go to the killer shack. Next, it was time to do something about the machine gun build, and the first step towards it was the nerf of mana grass braid and flower babushka in patch 2.1.0, which reduced their values to 8 and 12%, turning them into what they are today. And at that point, the only thing that was left to do to put an end to the insta throw meta was make these add-ons not stack with Tinker, which was done just two months later in patch 2.2.0. Zero, where Tinker was reworked into a gen defense perk. Also in this patch, the devs fixed the Huntress slower lunge attack by making all 4.4 killers lunge at the same speed as their 4.6 counterparts. But most importantly, they finally addressed the issue of her broken hitboxes by reducing their size and changing their shape to better resemble the actual shape of her hatchets, something that people had been asking them to do since her release. Unfortunately though, this decision resulted in arguably an even bigger issue, because now the hitboxes were so small and unforgettable giving that in order to hit a survivor you had to aim precisely at the middle of their body, otherwise your hatchet would simply go through them and nothing would happen, even if it clearly touched their arm, leg or even head. Yes, it was absolutely messed up and unfair, but after more than one year of getting constantly fucked by the Huntress hitboxes, I was low-key happy to see her on the receiving end of this madness. However, it didn't last long, because after just 9 days due to the massive backlash from Huntress mains, the devs decided to completely scratch all the hitbox changes and revert them to their previous state. And even though I fully accepted it, I was still a little disappointed, because it meant that while playing against the Huntress, I had to go back to holding W and pre-dropping safe pallets. Bonjour, monsieur. Moi, ça va être chaud. Faut juste pas que ils prennent... Bien joué. Ok, là ça va être chaud, il va falloir que je le moine, pas le choix.
pas un choix de M1 ici. Hein. Voilà, il baisse pas palette, il joue bien lui. Il joue bien, il joue bien le Dwight. La palette baissée, ouais, pour gagner du temps, c'est bien joué. About a year later, in patch 3.2.2, Behavior revisited the Huntress hatchet throwing animation and made it a little more responsive by reducing the delay after winding up. Supposedly, because personally, I can't f tell the difference. All right, people, here's a quick frame by frame comparison to better explain what I mean. We got the new Huntress on the right and the old one on the left. And if we go frame by frame, and we're gonna find the specific moment when about here when she starts throwing her hatchet and if we're going to compare it to the picture on the left here she's still holding it and well that's pretty much it that's the difference it's like what uh one two three four five six seven eight nine about nine frames i mean cool but does it really matter? The next change happened around the Ghostface era. It made the Huntress singing non-directional, so that it no longer gave away her position behind solid walls. And it was the right decision, because by that time survivors had already learned how to play against the Huntress and there was no need to hold them by the hand so much. 2021 started for the Huntress with a rework of her remaining add-ons. Patch 4.5.0 removed the Gen Repair debuff from the begrimed hat and replaced it with the hemorrhage effect. Three months later, in patch 4.7.0, it was followed by a full on add on pass. It standardized the rarity of the Huntress add ons, completely decommissioned and replaced the add ons that didn't make sense anymore, and either gave some add ons brand new properties or simply tweaked the values of the existing properties. The most important of all these changes was, of course, the final nerf of Iridescent Hat, which from now on not only reduced the maximum number of hatchets you could carry to one, but also capped it at one, so that you could no longer use it with the add ons for extra hatchets. One more thing that happened in this patch was the work of Object of Obsession. The new version was designed to automatically show the killer's aura to you whenever they see yours through their aura reading perks and add-ons. And on top of that, if you were the obsession, it also kicked in for 3 seconds every 30 seconds. At first it might seem completely unrelated, but the thing is that just a month later, the devs added Lethal Pursuer to the game, which doubled down on the Huntress aura reading meta. And this is when the new Object of Obsession came in handy, because it allowed you to see exactly when the Huntress was aiming at you from the other side of the map without even letting her know that she was actually being watched. A week later, in patch 4.7.1, the devs made it so that the hatchet counter started updating only after the Huntress was done reloading, and not as soon as she opened the locker like it used to be before. Which is cool, I guess? I mean, I'm sure all five people whose fetish is to watch the numbers on their hot change really appreciated it. Alright, go heal. I'll just... I'm gonna go... Wait, what? Hello? Why did it? Oh, okay, never mind. Cause, yeah, I messed up. I thought I thought I actually had one more hatchet, but then I realized that you know reloading doesn't really work the same way in this version. The beginning of 2022 brought us an update with the custom menu theme for the Huntress, which I instantly fell in love with. That's by the way what's playing in the background right now. And along with this, I also expected the devs to give her a new chase music, but it didn't happen. Neither then nor almost two years later, which makes me think that they simply forgot about it. Cause. Why bother? I mean, her terror radius is super small and most of the time people wouldn't be able to hear it anyway. The latest changes of today was a small buff in patch 7.3.0. It increased the Huntress reloading time from 4 to 3 seconds, and as an avid flashbang enjoyer, it actually makes me happy, because maybe it's gonna motivate people to stop running Iron Maiden on her so often. Overall, as much as I or anyone else wants to hate the Huntress, we just have to put up with the fact that she's not going anywhere. Just like the problem with her hitboxes, probably. So it's like, adapt or get destroyed. Or as a wise man once said, if something pisses you off in a multiplayer game, maybe you should mean it.